Hey everyone, how you doing today? As mentioned in our daily financial news, we have a lot of exciting interviews today, but because it is Thursday, it starts with my good friend, <laughs> Jonathan Twomley. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great, Michael. How are you? I'm doing well. We, we've got to talk about this. I can't wait. Maybe it'll be a month. Maybe it'll be two months from now where our first topic isn't unemployment. But <laughs> you know what? Today is a good day. Today's the, I call it a trend now, right? We've got two points. It's officially a trend. We have broken below 600. It's a streak. It's, a streak. it's two. It's, it's a streak it's two. two. <laughs> hey, man, it's not one. <laughs> it's not one. But we had really good unemployment numbers. They came in at uh, 547,000. They beat the estimate of 603. They beat last week of 576. Yep. So uh, I'm feeling pretty good. I've told people we're in the sun. This is more validation that we're out of the darkness entering the light. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, look, the the news is good. What can you say? It's it's uh, the trend is in the right direction. Um, everybody should be happy about that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're we're seeing some some COVID hotspots. We still have to be a little wary of it. But I think the the being outside, the good weather, you know, all that stuff is really helpful if people are not cooped up inside mm -hmm. and you know spreading COVID to each other. If they're outside mm -hmm. doing outside stuff then hopefully we can, you know, alleviate some of that as more people get vaccinated. So this is, um, it's all, it's all good news. I mean, just, you know, I think, I think a lot of people just feel a lot more positive than they were. That's, mm -hmm. you know, leading to people spending money, people going out, people doing stuff, people are returning to traveling. Yep. Uh, you know, again, as long as it's outside, it, it's, it, there's no, reason to worry but also the more people get vaccinated mm -hmm. you know the the better it is so yeah uh i think it's I, I i expect that we're going to continue to see uh some downward movement I, now i think i think there is the thing i i think we're going to hit another plateau okay at, at some point because i think we're getting into the low-hanging fruit Kind of like we we had low hanging fruit before for certain sure. businesses. Now we're getting to like another pocket of low hanging fruit, I think, which is all of those service workers who worked in mm -hmm. tourism and travel and hotels, mm -hmm. getting rehired in restaurants and stuff. Where people are now able to go out again, get get you know, because uh, they're they're vaccinated or whatever, and they're able to to travel again. And also, you know, with the warm weather coming back to the northern half of the country, mm -hmm. a lot of places. You know, people are it's a lot easier to sit outside and have a meal even if you can't sit inside but also i mean they've reopened like new york has reopened indoor dining at least 50 percent now mm. and um so the restaurants basically between indoor and outdoor dining a lot of restaurants are back to basically full capacity mm. and with the nice weather you know frankly i think a lot of people are going to be fighting for those outdoor tables because the yeah. weather is nice exactly. you know <laughs> so <laughs> yeah it's like you know uh now everybody's favorite restaurant has an outdoor has outdoor seating exactly. before, everybody's like like, outdoor. like nobody did before right so i mean i was out i was out for the first time uh with friends actually the first time since covid hit uh wow. with a group of, i've been i've been out like with one friend and we sat outside in the cold and had a drink or whatever but i they went out with a group of friends for the first time this week and uh you know we went to a, a restaurant that has a garden and it was it was packed i mean it was like the garden was full it was much bigger than the actual, you know, the table, it's a really tiny restaurant. Their garden is much bigger than the restaurant. Huh. So I'm sure that they were pretty excited to be able to have that many people, you know, yeah. it's bigger than their normal Cleaning footprint. up. <laughs> yeah, bigger than their normal footprint. And the weather was gorgeous and like oh, everybody awesome. wanted to be outside. So I think that you're going to see that continue and, and definitely. Uh, so, but that, but I think then what's going to happen though, is we're going to kind of, all those people are going to get rehired yeah. and then, then we're going to run into the hardcore like victims of COVID mm. trotch of people where, where their employers are gone. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I, I think it's going to take, you know, I don't know what that number is, whether that's, we get down to, you know, 300,000 claims or yeah. 200,000. But I mean, I think we're going to hit a point where we're going to stick there for a while because it's just going to take time for yeah. the new businesses to start up again and to get, you know, the, the employment ball sort of rolling again. Once, once we run through all those people who can just go back to their old jobs, yeah. you know, that we're sort of like in, in a, in a state of 
suspended animation for a year right yeah Yeah. so so i think that so that'll be the next like you know level of resistance to break to break through and i think that will just be tougher because yeah it's you can't just you know even though like the restaurant industry maybe a lot of places like a lot of places are just turnkey all they need to do is sign a lease yeah turn on the power let's go power put up some new signs yeah done and and they're done and they have a restaurant but uh, for I think for a lot of other businesses, it's going to take some time for them to really yeah. come back. And and anything that's related to international travel is still going to suffer because that's that's oh, probably going to yeah. be the last thing that that gets unlocked is you know yep. international travel. Yeah, Americans yeah. are going to have to get comfortable with people coming from overseas, and vice versa. And that's just going to take time. So yeah. Well, I'm not going to think about that because I think we've got a couple of months of good news. I'm going to enjoy the sun. It feels good. Um, yeah, I don't know where it is. I think even before COVID, we were still having 160 or 180,000 jobless claims a week. So I think we get down to 300 or something. Uh, you know, I'll call that good. I did see a stat by Yelp uh, Tuesday, I think it was, where we've had 580, call it 600,000 openings, right? I talked about grand openings yeah. of businesses being a wow. record this year. Yeah. Wow. And so it was, it was 587, I'll round to six, and 33% of them were in the last 90 days. So that was a wow. year number. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think we have, I think we're going to have, what are we in April? I think we're going to have three or four months of kind of the service sector reinvigorating kind of the low hanging fruit to your mm-hmm. term. And then, yeah, it will be slower, but positive growth because I do think, you know, the competitive juices will come in and we'll see more, uh, grand reopenings this year. All right. So I think we're out of the tunnel. I think it gets better from here, but the last thing to talk about with employment is there will be a side effect in my opinion. And that is going to be wages in the service sector. I'm already seeing it. I'm already having people reach out to me on the channel saying, hey, either A, I'm an employer and I can't hire people. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like, for example, I got stats on Rhode Island. Somebody called me from Rhode Island. Right now, state uh, unemployment plus the goose up from the Fed is 570. The average, uh, you know, McDonald's, you know, service person makes 582 a week. So Mm -hmm. it's $12 more. So they're saying- I can't hire anybody because they'd rather sit home than work 40 hours for 12 bucks, right? So I think what's going to happen is we're going to have wage inflation and the employee, right? If I was an employee in one of those jobs today, I'd be looking for another job in a raise. So I think we're going to have wage inflation. And again, Mm. higher incomes, not necessarily a bad thing, but I think the employee in that service sector, which was a lane of the highway that was closed, it has power like they've never had before. And, uh, you know, we're going to see them make an extra couple of bucks an hour, which is uh, a good thing, I think. You know, it's interesting because The Economist last week or the week before ran a, a big special on employment. And one of the themes that they were arguing was that we're about to enter into what they called like a golden age for employees, mm-hmm. where like the, you know, the pendulum had shifted so far in the favor of employers over Absolutely. the last f- yeah. 40 years or so that you had very little wage growth. You had, you know, uh, it just wasn't a good time, you know, for wage earners, it wasn't good. The, the, most of the, the productivity gains were being siphoned off by the, by the top. And, mm-hmm. uh, but, what the economist is arguing is that actually the pendulum is now swinging back in the other direction where I would wage agree. earners are going to have more power and they're going to be able to get them a bigger piece of the pie for themselves. And of course that will have ripple effects through the economy as people <laughs> have more money to spend. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, Definitely not a bad thing to bring that back into a little more balance than it has been. Um, yeah, I was thinking something when talking about inflation. Yep, I, I I do think that you know I think some wage inflation is is good. Me too. Uh, certainly, if you're a landlord, you you love it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I think we're we're in danger of the uh, asset uh, sort of the investment asset piece of the economy overheating at, because. We have, you know, somehow during COVID, we had, at least by the numbers, like the worst recession we've ever had in history, and stock market didn't budge. Mm-hmm. You know, the prices of investment assets, you know, continued to climb. And now, you know, even though what we really were kind of due for, and there's there's definitely some evidence that we were on the verge of a recession before COVID hit, mm-hmm. uh, and possibly even started a recession before COVID hit, just a natural business cycle recession but we never had the necessary kind of letting the air out of the tires of, of the, of the bubble. 
-hmm. what we did was just it stayed it got even bigger and now what you're seeing is like oh the economy is opening up everyone's enthusiastic that means everything companies gonna keep make more going money. <laughs> and now now they're investing even they're jumping into you know yeah. investment assets even more because yeah. on the theory that like oh well now the economy is going to do great the problem is there's a mismatch there right the economy never we never had the correction yeah. to account for the economic like correction that not correction but the economic devastation that we had mm -hmm. it never got reflected in asset prices but now we're having the bounce back and i and i think that you know asset price most assets have already been inflated it's been called it was called the everything bubble before covid hit yeah and now i think we have danger of uh it's just getting out of control and i think it's you know you've got just stupid stuff like dogecoin or however that's pronounced doggy coin i don't know how that's that's supposed to be pronounced started as a joke yeah it was started as a joke as a send up of crypto yeah right and and it ex has exploded in value yeah. i mean when people are when people are throwing money yeah. at literally anything that mm -hmm. and that you can buy that's that's called an investment asset by somebody yeah right it's uh that is i i've been here before something I remember yeah, the I mean, dot com up close and personal. I live in the valley. I remember just stupid stuff going on, yeah. and uh, I've been, I've looked at Dogecoin a couple of times. I just talked about it for the first time on my daily financial news, and I there's two things I said. First, I looked at it when it was a penny or thereabouts, and the first line is it was created as a joke, and I'm like I'm out, not putting yeah. any money on jokes. I don't like pet rocks and cabbage patch dolls. No thanks. I looked at it again when it had a run up because of Elon Musk and um, Mark Cuban. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, one of the things I like about Bitcoin is it's limited. Let's go look at Doge, 129 billion. That's not limited. I'm out. Uh, yeah. So it's 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 people doing stupid things. It's there. Everybody wants a wish and a hope for wealth, and they want it now. So they roll the dice. And just so that you know, Doge coins are down about 50 percent. Uh, no, yeah. about 40 percent in the last three days. So congratulations for uh, throwing away money. Yeah, well, I mean, listen, we've had we, we're seeing this with this whole GameStop thing. Mm. I mean, you know, I, I think that uh, there's a there's a it's become so difficult for people to make money mm -hmm. in the more traditional ways. It's be, you know, and you can't grow your wealth by saving money anymore or investing in conservative yeah. things. So the entire con economy has become basically a casino and people are just throwing money at anything in the hope of capturing a return. And yeah. that that's a dangerous situation in my view. I mean, I just don't see this as being healthy. No. I think, you know, people, people who are, you know, talking about Bitcoin as being, uh, you know, the future of currency and the future. And I mean, I look at it very differently. I look at it and say, the fact that people are, putting this much money mm -hmm. and this much hope into something like Bitcoin, which is based on zero, which is based on nothing, mm -hmm. right? And unlimited substitution. I mean, it is limited. You can all, you know, the number of Bitcoins are limited, but the number of cryptocurrencies is, is infinite. <laughs> it seems like as, as you know, it is, it, it is literally infinite. There's nothing. Yeah. I literally have a friend who created a cryptocurrency two weeks ago, right? Yep. Anybody can do it. You and I could, you and I could create the real estate crypto, right? Tomorrow. Yeah. And we could say, and it's, and we could limit it. Right. Mm -hmm. And we could, we could do the same thing as Bitcoin. And the, the only thing Bitcoin has in Ethereum to a lesser extent is a quote unquote brand, but it's a brand for nothing, right? It's a brand just because more people know about it and more people sort of trust it, but mm. it's still, they're all still zero, right? Mm. They're based on air. Right. So the, the fact that people are putting so much into this in terms of like, not just money, but also like, hopes and they're also justifying like oh well the banks are getting in of course the banks are getting in they see stupid people putting money into it they know that they can the banks, banks can like get, fees people banks like not only fees. That, but the banks can get in and get out right yeah, and the exactly. banks know the banks are like way ahead of these day trading crypto folks oh yeah they 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 probably have their crypto bets hedged they'll make money if they win they make money if they lose like the fact that they're putting money into this is not validating crypto it's basically saying they spot an opportunity to make money yeah. off off stupid people they found so a they're sucker do, at the table and they found gonna, a sucker know. this is a sucker bet and banks are great at taking advantage of sucker bets because they're not the they're not the suckers nope right the banks are not the suckers the banks are making money off the suckers right they're like the casinos right yeah. you occasionally so, catch them 
but yeah, they're yeah, they're yeah. they're big for a reason. Just like so, casinos, they are big for a reason. They are very yeah, good at what they do. Exactly. So the the so the fact that people are putting so much money into this, and I, every time I mention this, people, I get so much hate for this. Yeah. People are so psychologically invested in it, yeah. and actually now they're financially invested in it too. So they don't like hearing that based on uh, nothing, mm-hmm. right? Because they because they know. They don't like hearing this because they know that the, that the minute that like someone rushes for the door, then everyone I, will rush in for the and they won't be able to get out and it'll go there. to zero. I know right? it. I've been there. And I, so I feel you. Yes. The fact that people are putting so much into this, to my mindset, is actually evidence that there's something wrong with the economy, right? There's something fundamentally wrong mm. if this is where people, this is how people think that they can get wealthy. It's basically saying, I, this is sneak oil for the 21st century. Like I want to get rich easily and quickly with no effort, no work, yeah. no thought, no nothing, no analysis, just, you know, oh, because somebody said one day Bitcoin will be worth a million dollars. Well, somebody once said a tulip bulb is going to be worth a million dollars too. We've yeah. been here before South Sea bubble. This was based on nothing. There was no South Sea company, right? They just sold the stock yeah. and everybody believed it. And yeah. some people got rich. Some people got rich off it, right? Because yeah. the ones who sold out got rich. But crypto is the same in my view. It has a purpose. Blockchain has a purpose. But that doesn't make this an investment asset or an asset at all. It's a it's a product. It's a thing that you're able to buy. But I mean, you know, the, it it's entirely based on the fact that you think other people are going to pay you for it. Yeah. Right. That's the whole belief. You just believe that somebody else is going to pay you for it someday when you need to cash out. Right. I mean, Kramer, Jim Kramer, yeah. you know, just had that thing last week. I thought it was great. I just used fake money to pay off a real debt. Yeah, right? he did. Yeah. He bought it 12, sold it 60 roughly and, and paid off his yeah. house. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, and he, he used fake money mm-hmm. and he sold it to another sucker to, you know, he said, okay, this is, I've made enough on this fake asset. I'm going to get out before the whole thing collapses yep. and I'm going to use it to, to take a real debt off my, off my balance sheet. Right. And so that is a good use of it. But I mean, the idea that like, oh, I'm going to stick around because it's going to be a million. I mean, I think, you know, the, the chances, the chances of it going to zero are far higher than it goes to a million. Now, who knows? I could be wrong because the mania could continue that long. And then all you guys will come back and say, wrong. And <laughs> this is recorded. You're, you're wrong. Jonathan. You're, you're, you're a fool. I mean, I've already been called a fool about Bitcoin. So I've been called lots of things in my life. Don't, don't yeah. let it bother you. Well, this is going to be yeah. fun. This is going to lead to episode number two, uh, where we talk about staying motivated uh, because you and I are having hard times finding deals. So uh, yeah. let's get into episode number two. Thanks, Jonathan. Absolutely.